Hi everyone, welcome to another of my MinMax character creation guides to Pillars of Eternity. My name is Maxen. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Rogue class. Now, Rogues are in the same basic class group as Rangers and Cyphers. They're a heavy hitter type of class that specifically only targets one opponent at a time. In fact, I would call them the Boss Killer class, as they start with a really amazing starting ability, the Sneak Attack, and they can get a variety of other abilities and talents later on that cause extra amounts of damage. So much, in fact, that they can take opponents down incredibly quickly uh, once they're very leveled up. Now, the Sneak Attack ability, what it does is give 1.5 times damage against opponents. If you hit them within the first couple of seconds of combat starting, or if you afflict them with one of these afflictions, I believe there are 9 there, if you watched my Priest build class with the Skein Priest, I actually used a lesser version of the Stink Attack uh, that the Skein Priest gets in that video. It's a brilliant ability. The Rogue also starts with a point in Stealth and a couple of points in Mechanics. They actually, out of all of the classes, no one else has a couple of points in Mechanics, I believe. So they are very good at uh, laying traps, for example, and also finding hidden objects and uh, unlocking uh, things that need to be unlocked. So you may want to tool up your rogue to take advantage of that. You can also maybe turn them into a more stealthy character to sneak up on the people. Uh, they actually have some talents linked to that where you can uh, stab people in the back, for example. They make very good... Uh, they're very good in a role where basically you're finding traps in a dungeon. So maybe you can invest in a certain amount of stealth mechanics and uh, generally be your party scout. That's the way you can definitely go with them. The health and endurance, they are about at the mid-level out of all of the classes. They're probably about 6th or 7th in uh, terms of endurance and health. But they have terrible deflection. So if the rogue gets attacked, they really don't last too long. Uh, you can definitely make them uh, more survivable if you invest in certain attributes. I'll be discussing why I've picked those attributes later on. But uh, in general, you really don't want to be attacked with the Rogue. Their accuracy, they actually have the highest accuracy in the game, which uh, is befitting of a uh, damage dealing type class. Now the Rogue is actually excellent both at melee and at long range. So it kind of uh, gives you a decision about what you should more focus on. In this video, I'm going to be showing a build that is particularly good at both, uh, which you can actually do. Uh, there are classes, that builds that you could do which focus more than on one than the other and I will we'll be discussing uh, that to a certain extent in this video. Now moving on to attributes. I've gone for a very DPS damage per second type build attribute stats here. So the Rogue uh, really needs Might and Dexterity, that's what Obsidian has recommended and I completely agree with them here. So you want to be doing as much damage as quickly as possible. They don't have any healing talents at all, but in theory you could use potions, I guess, to uh, take advantage of this, if you, especially if you invest in more uh, survival skill points. Uh, dexterity, yeah, you need this to attack quickly, so that's why you need to invest highly in that. The other attributes arguably aren't so important at all. Uh, for most of the rogue-type builds you would uh, want to make, Intellect, they do have some duration effects, abilities, so that's the reason why I've uh, capped that out here. But some builds may actually benefit from not so much intelligence, which I'll be mentioning later on. The other stats I would uh, tend to vary dependent on what type of rogue you want to make. There are certain weapon types that benefit more from perception. Uh, say for example quick attacking weapons like a weapon in each hand or bows or um, hunting bows or war bows tend to benefit from this. I'm actually going to be using the weapon focus of soldier so I don't really need so much perception because I'll be focusing on two handed weapons, uh, guns, arbalist and uh, great sword and pikes. Uh, one of those or all of those. So yeah I don't need so much perception with this build so that's why if you wanted more perception, you can maybe get rid of uh, constitution or maybe intellect. Uh, if you're going to make a more melee focused build, you could maybe invest more in perception and resolve and ditch your intelligence. That's probably what I would uh, recommend. 
Now the reason I've gone for my culture, Dead Fire Archipelago, that gives an extra point in Dexterity, one of the key attributes. And the background I've gone for is Labourer, which gives you an extra point in Mechanics. So I'm really going to be uh, focusing on Mechanics later on. If you wanted to potentially uh, make use of Scrolls, then you could probably go for Aristocrat. Or if you wanted to, say, uh, have... Uh, a melee build then maybe you would want to go colonist and have some potions to keep you alive a bit longer if you get yourself into trouble but uh, I'm aiming not to be attacked at hardly at all with this build trying to avoid situations where uh, people are targeting me now the reason I've picked an island of Mauer as my race is not only does the island of Mauer maximize one of my most important stats it gives a couple of points in might but its ability is particularly good as well um, to the teeth it gives an extra additional weapon set so this could be used to maybe give my uh, rogue an extra gun or arbalist or perhaps even use a pike and a great sword as uh, well as a gun as well so yeah it gives you a lot of options that extra weapon if I wasn't gonna pick the island of Mauer then you're probably still wanting to look for a race that specializes in one of the maximized stats so godlike isn't too bad potentially i quite like the moon godlike this gives you another backup basically if you get attacked and you find yourself in trouble this could get you out in time potentially because this would kick in quite quickly i wouldn't really recommend much armor at all with the rogue because you want to be maximizing your damage per second and if you wear armor then that uh, increases your recovery speed time so if you were attacked this could get you out of trouble other picks, the elf is particularly good for a uh, ranged type of uh, rogue build, the extra accuracy uh, against enemies at uh, 4 meters away, that would be pretty good potentially. I would probably use this on a rogue build that maybe uses a quick attacking ranged weapon like a war bow for example, but I think you'd probably be missing out a lot because the rogue's so good at melee as well. Uh, to have a build like that, but you could go that way. Uh, you could, there are rogue builds where you could have, say, four firearms using the island of Mawa, so maybe four blunderbusses or four archibuses, for example. That's a way you can go. Uh, that might be quite interesting. Fire off. Well, what well, you'd be very good at the start of combat doing a huge amount of damage, but after that, uh, the, uh, the rogue wouldn't be so good potentially if you went down that route. For the, yeah, I don't think there's any other races here that I would particularly recommend other than uh, the ones I've mentioned. Some are okay, maybe. Now, for the pick I've made on the rogue ability, I've picked Crippling Strike. This is more suited towards a more range type rogue. Uh, but I'm actually probably going to be picking Blinding Strike at some point later on as well. Uh, Blinded is an extremely good affliction both of these afflictions actually qualify for the rogue sneak attack uh, but you get two uses for crippling strikes you'd use this to shoot someone basically at the start of combat and it would slow them down because it lowers their movement and then basically they take longer to get to your front line so you can shoot them up more in the uh, time that you've got there uh, if you use that on them and blinding strike is uh, probably more useful in combat in melee very good still Let's take a look at the other skills and talents and abilities though that the rogue can pick. Okay, we'll do the skills at level 12 as usual. So moving on to talents. Now, we only get one class talent at level 2 and that is backstab. Now, it's you shouldn't arguably be able to pick this this early on because you can only actually use this if you're able to go invisible, which you're not yet, although there is a talent later on which allows you to. And you can also use it when you're in stealth. Now I believe this doesn't mean via stealth attack, it means literally when you're in scouting stealth mode. So to use this you basically have to sneak up towards someone and be within 2 meters of them to uh, gain the uh, weapon bonus of uh, an extra 2 times damage. Now it does, yeah it says melee or ranged. I don't particularly like this to be honest. Um, it is a lot of damage in terms of bonus but do you really want to be sneaking up to a group of enemies might be useful against one enemy but taking on one enemy is easy anyway so it's kind of a waste of a talent I think that pick 
I'm actually going to be picking a weapon focus to start out. Now this is really the crucial decision in my opinion with the rogue. I'm going to be picking soldier. So this I want to be using two handed weapons. I'm later going to be picking two handed style to get another damage bonus with this. And this weapon focus really specializes in two handed weapons. So you've got a great sword, a pike, an arbalist and an arquebus. So what I'm going to be doing with this build is firing off probably uh, Arquebuses at the start of combat before moving in with either a pike or a great sword. There's plenty of other combinations you could do. I mean, if you wanted a two handed style rogue, uh, maybe Ruffin would be the way to go. If you wanted a rogue that was using quick ranged, uh, long range weapons, and either the war bow or the uh, hunting bow might be a way to go, and then maybe selecting uh, penetrating shot to make them a bit better. There's tons of variations for the rogue, but uh, in this build, for this build, I'm going to be using soldier. Right, so moving on, uh, we get to pick a ability, of course, at level three. So we can still pick blind and strike, which is one of the initial options that we could pick. And I may actually pick that here. Dirty fighting converts hits to crits. Useful. There's actually a talent which comes off this. Escape is a way to break engagement and make yourself immune to engagement. You can actually use this per encounter. This is probably a pretty good pick if you're having an entirely melee build with your rogue. Reckless Assault, that's uh, very good for melee type builds as well. Gives you extra accuracy and melee damage but at the cost of deflection. So you really, really don't want to be targeted with the rogue if you do take that. I'm going to be actually pick in a few of these picks here. I quite like uh, quite a lot of them. I'm probably going to start out with Blind In Strike though. Um, maybe I should pick that at this stage. I don't know. But yeah, we'll go for Blind In Strike for the time being. So moving on. Uh, more talents now. So we get Shadow and Beyond at this stage. Uh, this unlocks. So this is the ability to go invisible. You should really probably get this before backstab since uh, it needs invisible for one of its uh, things to work. So what this does is two per rest, you become invisible, you are immune to engagement and it lasts for a certain duration time based on your intelligence, uh, 10 seconds being the base. So this lasts longer for us and you are untargetable. But you also benefit from doing a sneak attack to any enemy uh, when you're in invisible mode but it ends the invisible mode if you do attack someone. So this is a way you can uh, cause extra damage or get out of trouble which uh, you might need. This is why I don't tend to pick that uh, ability which allows you to break engagement, escape, uh, because of uh, picking that talent. So you don't need it so much because you can break engagement using Shadow and Beyond. This is fast and uh, the Shadow and Beyond is instant as well which is uh, better. So we get some more options at this stage. We get Finishing Blow. Sadly, Finishing Blow really doesn't uh, give you much details on how it works, to be honest. It says uh, you gain, I think it supposedly means you gain extra damage dependent on how much endurance the opponent has. Uh, if they have less, then you do more damage. But it doesn't give you any details on that at all. Full attack, which means all of your weapons get actually boost. Uh, it's only two per rest, and the speed on the average. There is a talent which comes off this, which uh, it says, I believe, if my memory is correct, you do an extra two percent damage, which seems terrible. So I don't really get how finishing blows works, and it doesn't sound very good. Perhaps someone who's tested out would know more than me, um, but I'm not going to be picking that. Is dirty fighting? No, dirty fighting was before. Repost is new at this stage, so this is maybe good for a melee type uh, rogue build rather than uh, both my hybrid build here. So basically what happens here, melee attacks that miss, you have a chance of doing an instant full attack repost uh, only with uh, melee weapons equipped. So very good uh, perhaps for a melee type build, but yeah, you really don't want to be targeted at all, preferably with a rogue. So mainly attacking people who can't attack back or won't attack back is what I would uh, go for. D 
Deep Wounds. Now, this is an unusual pick. It's pretty decent. Basically, when you do any of uh, the normal standard attack, slash, pierce, or crush, you do raw damage. Raw damage, of course, means you ignore a DR, damage resistance or reduction. And this works over a base of 10 seconds. Now, also, this is a modified, I believe, by your might amount as well. So we get an extra 30% bonus here. So it's 13 instead of 10. Now, I think this is better, actually, if you have less intelligence. Because you would do it over a quicker amount of time. So this is a reason why you might not want intelligence with the rogue. It's I'm not actually going to be taking this pick here, but it might be a pretty good pick still. I think this would be particularly good for certain builds, but maybe not my build. Low intelligence builds and uh, perhaps uh, bow builds might this might work best for, I'm thinking. The raw damage. If you're attacking someone in melee, you want to take them down really quickly, so having extra raw damage arguably is... Well, it will help, but uh, before it's finished, you might have already taken them down. So here, I'm going to pick... Either Reckless Assault or Dirty Fighting. I think I'm going to pick that now because it's a talent which comes off it. So, but maybe I would pick that. Let's pick Dirty Fighting now. Okay, so talents. Now also if you're going to have a low intelligence build actually, this Envenom Strike might be pretty good. Uh, this does a huge amount of raw damage. And that also would be better if you have low intelligence because you want to do it as quickly as possible. And sadly that elongates the duration. Um, but if you, yeah, if you had a low intelligence build, I'd recommend this talent. Uh, so, in addition to Deep Wounds. Now at this stage, that's the talent which come off, comes off that pick I just made. So I'm going to pick that as well. It's an extra 10%. It's not super amazing, but uh, it's probably worthwhile picking. Now, moving on. So we've got more options here. Adept Evasion, I think, is a new pick here. So this basically... Half of grazes are converted to misses, probably better for a uh, melee type build, soul melee type build. Coordinating position, this is very good for melee build as well. So you swap positions with a, another person within your party and it's fast as well. I'm not going to be picking that either. I'm going to be picking Reckless Assaults. So I do want to get into melee with this rogue occasionally, uh, when it's safe too basically to gain the extra accuracy and melee damage. And talent picks. I'm not actually going to be picking this. This comes off that pick I just made. It gives you extra deflection. It doesn't get rid of the deflection malice completely, but it comes close to this. This would probably be half decent for a melee build as well. You could use this all the time rather than just occasionally when you're in melee with, uh, if you pick that what I'd probably recommend. So here I've got three picks left and I think I'm gonna pick two-handed style at this stage. I'm just gonna be using two-handed weapons so I should pick this up at some point definitely. So let's pick that there. Next rogue ability we've got two left here. These are both new. Now Withering Strike is per encounter and that does weekend. So you benefit from having intelligence here, and there's a full attack and extra 1.25 damage. All of these damage multiply stack as well, so you're really building up huge amounts of percentage boost on your damage for all of these abilities. This one is slightly better in the fact that it has an extra weakened ability, which both of these qualify for the sneak attack ability as well. Problem with, is with it though, it's per rest. So I kind of prefer this one to be honest. Oh, it's actually hobbled instead of uh, weakened, actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, I prefer I prefer Withering Strike because it's per encounter. If you're resting constantly in your game, then maybe this is better for you. But you probably shouldn't be resting too often if you're pretty good at the game. So I prefer the per encounter ability here. So let's take Withering Strike. Uh, moving on. So... There's quite a few good picks left for the rogue here. I'm going to be picking... Well, let's go through all, them all Is it at this stage. So, Deep Pockets, potentially okay if you went for certain... 
If you had uh, high amounts of uh, either mechanic, survival, or lore, with extra scrolls and potions and all that, but I'm not going to be picking that here, and I probably wouldn't recommend it for the rogue either. Quick switch, that's very good, perhaps if you're going for a ranged build, having four weapons, quickly moving between them. Uh, later on, with this build, I'm actually going to be picking Arms Bearer to give me an extra weapon set so I can have an extra weapon. Uh, I think that's all of the picks I like from there. Defensive, if you're going for a more melee type rogue build, then maybe Cautious Attack might be okay in certain circumstances when you're attacked. Uh, Superior Deflection, maybe. Not massively f big fans of those. Graceful Retreat, potentially, but you already have a couple of Retreat type things. Uh, that the rogue can have, so maybe not. Offensive, there's a lot of picks. Bloody Slaughter, I think, works well with certain weapon types against certain opponents. Probably uh, a weapon in each hand. Two one-handed weapons. High Perception builds might benefit from that. Bows builds would benefit from that. Uh, one weapon in each hand would benefit from vulnerable attack, but I don't think I need it with uh, two-handed weapons. Uh, I'm actually going to be picking for this build though, Savage Attack. This gives you yet another damage boost at the cost of melee accuracy. But remember earlier on I picked a pick that gave an extra 8 accuracy in combat and extra damage at the cost of deflection. So picking this, the melee accuracy, I'm not really losing accuracy. I still have plus 3 accuracy when using that ability in effect. So I think I should stack the damage even more here by picking Savage Attack. Uh, moving on, last pick. I think this pick is probably a pick that you should almost always make. Death Blows. So basically you do two times melee damage and two times range damage with Death Blows as long as uh, you do a sneak attack and the sneak attack that you do is the target is afflicted by two or more conditions. So say for example flanked and blinded prone and blinded, prone and weakened, any two of the nine affliction types and then you will do two times damage. I'm not sure, maybe this is instead of one and a half, I doubt they both had. Not 100% sure on that though, but Death Blows is a very good pick and that's going to be my last pick with this rogue build. And less talent, well I've got to do the skills first, so let's maximize mechanics. I'm not sure what's the maximum mechanics in the game that you probably need. There's a variety of ways you can get bonuses. So 12 I'm going to have here. Maybe that's too much. I don't actually know what the maximum lockpick or trap skill is in the game. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have 12. And with the rest, let's invest that in athletics and stealth. So this character would be pretty good at uh, finding traps and locking stuff. Sneaking up on people to a certain extent. Uh, anything athletics, the key amount really is uh, getting to athletics 3 to have the combat fatigue at the cap. You can't get better than uh, minus 90%. So maybe you could put up the 3 and then invest somewhere else. Perhaps. Uh, if you're going for a melee type build, I'd probably recommend maybe putting some into survival. Or you could potentially go low with your really high damage. Uh, my high might and intelligence potentially I have a few scrolls but um, yeah it's kind of up to you it's quite flexible the rogue is really with its skills what you should be doing with it so yeah I think that's where I would go though. maybe and less talent pick I'm gonna pick that arms bearer right let's take a look at uh, the rogue in combat okay so this is our finished level 12 rogue and you can see all of its stats and all of the skills, talents, picks that I picked earlier on. Uh, so it's got half decent health and endurance isn't dreadful, I guess, with uh, this constitution of seven. I've uh, initiated the Reckless Assault ability, so deflection is dreadful. So and I'm also, this is the weapons and uh, armor I've got. No armor at all. So if I get attacked, this rogue will go down very quickly, but I'm going to be trying to avoid situations where I do get attacked. Certain opponents won't attack the rogue, but certain opponents will. So if you do come up against certain opponents that tend to go for your weaker party members, you may want to wear armor in those circumstances. 
I've given my rogue a couple of arquebuses here, but you could definitely give it three arquebuses. If you were going for a very ranged rogue build, then you would want four ranged weapons, potentially ones that reload, like arquebuses or arbalists or blender buses, for example. But I've got two here, so I've got I've given myself a choice of using the pike or the great sword, and of course these are better against certain opponent types. Uh, because that only does pierce and that does slash and pierce. No crush uh, weapons, sadly, in the soldier um, weapon set. Actually, they have uh, hammers, so I lie about that. Uh, but uh, we want to use two-handed weapons with our rogue. Now, both of these I've put on Savage Attack and Reckless Assault. Uh, let's find yes. someone to attack. So I'm going to use this guy as a punch bag, basically, here. Take and uh, care of it shoot with my rogue. Now let's attack here. So we attack within the first couple of seconds of combat we get a sneak attack yeah. ability. Is this firing anytime soon? Right, so we attack there, 45 damage and we did a sneak attack because it's within the first couple of seconds and he's hobbled now so it'll take a bit longer to get down here. But he's almost there already, so not really. Let's fire. Slow this one down. Right, before I actually fire, let's switch over weapons. Let's remember to do that. And then hobble that one as well, if we can. Right, so let's fire there. Uh, not as much damage that time, sadly. So what I'm going to do now is basically let the trolls engage this guy. And then I'll switch to one of these uh, melee weapons. Probably a pike would be the best idea here. You probably don't want to get the rogue engaged at all actually in most combat situations. They go on slow because they're hobbled now. So let's bring no the rogue problem. in. Attack with the pike. I'm actually going to use blinded strike first of all. So 34 damage. Now the sneak attack didn't work here because it wasn't already inflicted. But the next attack should work as a sneak attack, in theory. Huh. So 49 that time round, we did an extra one and a half times damage. And we actually used that dirty fighting ability there. It was a hit that was turned into a crit. So that was uh, fortunate for us. Now I believe if I use Withering Strike as well, Got by using that. Right, we're still getting a sneak attack. Now hopefully the blinded... Ah, we actually missed with the additional effect. That's a shame. Now if I'd have hit him with two additional effects, then the rogue would benefit from... Uh, what's the ability called? Death Blow. So we'd be getting two times damage, but sadly we haven't uh, been able to do that here. Uh, does this guy have anything? No, he doesn't have anything that can help me, sadly. Oh, he has a... that. So, let's try that. See if I can show it. Oh, God. Did it work? Yeah, so next, this should, now, <coughs> if I attack quick enough, benefit from the twice... Yeah, here we go. Death Blow's kicked in. So that's two affliction types causing a huge amount of damage. 61 damage you did on that troll. Okay, let's keep attacking here. Uh, we've also got the Shadow and Beyond ability, which I'll just use got to show it off. So basically no one can attack you when you're using this. And you can use it to uh, get a sneak attack when you come out of it as well. There you go. So that's the rogue. Causes massive amounts of damage very quickly if you put have the right stats and pick the right abilities as well. And it's a great class for uh, a lot of parties. I would definitely consider the rogue. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help me out by giving this video a like. I'm really grateful to those of you who do that as it improves my videos in YouTube search rankings. You may have used the search feature yourself to actually find this video. So yeah, please help out uh, like-minded people who might enjoy this video by giving this video a like. If you're actually new to the channel yourself, you may want to consider subscribing. There's plenty more of these character creation videos. You can find the playlist in the comments section. I've done a build 
for every class now apart from the range and the druid but I plan on doing them in the next week or so and then I might actually start to do some more builds for certain classes I've already covered there's a huge variety of different builds you can do for most of the classes um, so yeah I definitely want to cover some more of uh, those classes again now I actually plan on doing a Galactic Civilization 3 Let's Play on the channel pretty soon as well so that's maybe a reason you may want to subscribe in addition to uh, those uh, character creation videos. Uh, there's plenty more Let's Plays as well on the channel. You may want to check out the homepage to see if there's something you're interested in. There probably is. Uh, hopefully anyway. So if there's any feedback or opinions that you have about this video you may want to let me know about that as well. I respond to pretty much every comment or especially questions left on the channel. Uh, so please comment if you have something to say. And I think I've covered just about everything I wanted to cover. So thank you for watching. I also have a Patreon page that's maybe something you're interested in, so please check it out as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.